All right, Michelle, I guess, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, preparing for tomorrow uh, a little bit. Uh, talk a little bit about that balloon release and, and what do you expect from the event for tomorrow? Well, it's just a way to honor Sarah's life. Um, of course, we didn't want to even think about this year getting here, but it has, so we're just going to honor her. And, and if you don't mind, you know, going back, it was a year ago yesterday, um, what goes through your mind is, you, you know, it's an anniversary you don't want to celebrate, obviously. Um, how do you look back on, you know, that day? You know, all weekend, I, um, because of course, Bellevue University had their graduation this weekend and, you know, our days fall different, but I look at it as this weekend was the year, you know, because that Friday night we had that dinner just like Bellevue did this Friday night um, for the graduates and uh, then Saturday at this time, of course, today is the 30th, so at this time we were at Mid-America Center watching her graduate. We went out to lunch about this time with her at Olive Garden to celebrate and then knowing that matter of 15 hours she was going to be taken from us. So Saturday night was really, really hard because again, to me, that was the year, you know, um, even though it wasn't the 30th or the 31st, Saturday was the year for us falling in the day suit. And so of course I didn't sleep and I waited and I went to bed probably about five in the morning because my son had called me at 4.12 that morning because that's when the cops went to his house to notify him that Sarah had been in an accident. Then he had the horrible task of calling his father and I to let us know that Sarah had been in the accident. So, you know, it's just those horrible memories and then the good ones from earlier in the day and watching that big beautiful smile on stage and accomplishing all she had done and it's just it it sucks all of it sucks but mm -hmm. it's never going to bring her back we'll continue to fight for justice of course for her because we still have her killer free and you know that so you don't not that it'll give us closure but um at least we'll feel that some justice was served you know and all we can hope for now and that's what we're fighting on now and go back, uh, when was the last time you saw her on that day it would have been probably about three o'clock in the afternoon after we had eaten at olive yeah. garden and then the wonderful child she was about 6 30 we got a text from her thanking all of us my mom my sister and i for coming to her graduation and i i text her back and i'm like honey we want to miss it for the world you know and you know how people always say you wonder if they know something's going to happen but it wasn't unlike her to thank people and it was just you know that being the last text thanking us for supporting her and going to her graduation and just showed how great of a child she was you know and I um I just can't believe that was the last time we got to see her alive you know and then get the call go up to the hospital and see her laying in that bed and already knowing that she was gone because she was declared brain dead at that time. Um, but again, being an organ donor, she was left on life support until we could get the organ or the recipients in place to receive her organs. And I just, so much has happened and so much has yet stayed the same, you know. Her room we've not touched, we've added a, her diploma and we've added a couple of her pictures from graduation that day, but other than that it's left the same way she left it Saturday night when she went to go celebrate with her friends. What's it like for you to visit that room? I mean, you said you've left it kind of untouched, you know, since you've been there. What, are, what kind of emotions stir when you go into her room? Sometimes they're good and sometimes they're just horrible. It's good because you feel her in there and you can smell her still. And um, I remember when she was younger and I'd go into her room anywhere. She, when she'd go out of town, like she'd go stay with my sister up north or when she went to California to visit a friend. And 
I just go in there and hug her pillow and smell it. But no one, she was coming back. And now it's just different. You go in there and you know she's never coming back to that room. In real life, I know she visits often in spirit, but it's not the same. Are there certain signs you see? Uh, you know, they say sometimes when people pass and they'll leave pennies or, or certain things. Are there certain signs you see? A lot of pennies or when I'm sad or angry about something, she'll pop this beautiful memory into my mind, either to make me laugh or, and I'll have to say, because we always called her Sissy. I'll say, Sissy, Mommy just needs time to break down right now, so I don't want to smile and I don't want to laugh, but she never gives up. The memory still comes, and then I get past it, you know, and I know it's her putting it there, so I won't be so sad. And to make me laugh or get me out of my angry mood or whatever the case may be at that time. But yeah, and cardinals are a big thing of ours too, and we see them all the time along with the pennies. And she's just silly sometimes with her thought process of things that she'll do. And uh, You said, you know, a lot has changed over the past year, and a lot still hasn't. Um, obviously, since this happened, you guys, you and Scott, have been very vocal and active in trying, you know, stricter immigration laws, uh, you know, with, as a Mejia and, and that sort of thing. Um, and then Sarah's Law. Uh, I guess talk a little bit about what you guys have done and not stayed silent. You guys have been actively involved in trying to prevent this from happening to other people as well. I guess talk a little bit about this past year and what you guys have done in terms of trying to help, you know, prevent this from happening again. We've had a lot of help on the political aspect of things um, and with a lot of friends. But the things that I would love to never see another death due to an illegal alien. But unfortunately, that's not happening. However, them detaining the person that has caused a death has increased which I'm grateful for because losing a child and then having their killer go free is hard. It's very, very hard. So if that's helped a family not have to go through that second part of it, I feel we've done a pretty good job of that. We've stayed very upfront and vocal about how we want that law changed because until this happened to Sarah, I did not realize that wasn't the law, that ICE could refuse to detain somebody. They always want to talk about sanctuary cities. I am against them, but however, in Omaha, they are a sanctuary city. Our Omaha Police Department did everything in their power to get ICE to detain him, but ICE refused. ICE is always saying that the sanctuary city Local police don't want to work with them. Well, in our case, that wasn't the way it happened. Our local police did everything in their power to get him detained, and it didn't happen. So we do have a different situation in that case. And again, I just thought that was the law, and I thought that's how the law read. So then when we went to Sarah Saldana, the director of ICE, and she had a ton of things that she said and then backtracked, you know, when Senator Sass confronted her, Senator Grassley confronted her. Oh, Sarah wasn't dead at the time. Oh, they didn't know this. Oh, they didn't know that. Well, that's not our fault. That's your job. And when you have the local police department saying, hey, we think this guy's a flight risk. We want you to detain them and you refuse. That's on you guys. So, But we've stayed vocal with that, trying to pass Sarah's law. I know uh, President Trump did in his in executive order take a piece of Sarah's law, which was if you cause serious bodily injury or death, you get detained and deported. I want that still to be a law because as we know, executive orders can be overridden by the next president. So it still needs to be a law and I'm hoping that we can keep fighting and going forth with that. So. But I also hope that it opens up a bigger picture, like with Kate's Law, so. I was going to kind of tell you a little bit about that. Now that, you know, it's President Trump, uh, 
you know, he's been very vocal. He's used your family as a reference uh, to have stricter laws. Uh, do you hope that that increases the likelihood uh, with a lot of senators backing the law as well? Um, that you know it does become law sooner uh, rather than later. I definitely do. I know this time when they introduced Sarah's law, there were a lot more mm -hmm. names on there. So we're still fingers crossed. And I know a lot of families that I've had the pleasure of meeting or not pleasure of meeting because of our situation have laws as well in their children's name that they're trying to get passed. So. Fingers crossed that changes will be coming. And uh, you know, over the past year, talk a little bit about the support you guys have had. Obviously, you know, you have a you have blankets here, and I'm sure you've got a lot of letters and cards from people all across the country, kind of uh, you know talking about your family. What's been kind of uh, something you didn't realize, I guess, in over the past year uh, of you know people coming out and, and talking with you. I think that the biggest thing I did not realize is how big of an issue this was. I didn't realize so many families were affected um, and had lost their loved ones. A lot of children, a lot of moms and dads have lost their kids, a lot of them due to the drunk driving. And that is another law I'm trying to work on changing because that's getting out of control. You can't have three and four DUIs. and I don't know the answer, but we're going to work on an answer. Um, the other thing I've learned throughout this process is some people aren't always who they say they are, and there are a lot of groups out there that they say they're for the victim's families, and they aren't. They're for their own gain, which is unfortunate and sad when we're going through so much already, but most of all, the love and support that people have given us, not on the political aspect of it, but on the loss of a child, you know, in the way that it happened and what happened afterwards with him going free, you know. So those have all been things that um, we've come to meet a lot of different people and a lot of caring, caring people out there. And we've appreciate it so much and it gives us strength to continue our fight for those people and their loved ones my loved ones your loved ones and your viewers loved ones you know we don't want this happening to another family and I know it continues to happen but at least now they're detaining them so going back to the event tomorrow um since last year, have you been to that intersection before, 33rd and Allen? It was an obsession to begin with. We did actually a complaint form signing over there, and we um, used to drive it a lot. And it's that road, L Street, is horrible. And there are, you know, a lot of speeders on that street not necessarily just drunk, but they fly down that street. When we were over there the first time, my son and I had drove over and we sat in the parking lot, I think it's a Burger King, and there were probably almost four accidents and we weren't even there maybe 20 minutes because people don't pay attention and they're going so fast and you have that stoplight right there and they're coming open up over that crest and it's not a very big crest I mean you can still see the cars in front of you so it's not like it's obscuring your vision in any way but I just I I don't know why it's so bad and you know mm -hmm. shortly after Sarah's death you had the grandpa and his grandson you know another drunk driver hitting them and just accidents all times a day you know and I just, I don't, they need to be watching that street a lot better. And when we came visit you today, you said you were looking at graduation photos. What, what goes through your head as you look at, you know, your daughter there, uh, you know, on her, one of her happiest days uh, there? What, what kind of goes through your head as you... It makes me smile because, like, the, her friend Megan that posted those pictures on Facebook, because Megan had graduated with Sarah that day, and... They had been friends throughout this whole process, starting at Iowa Western with classes and then continuing on to Bellevue University. And 
the silliness those two were sharing with their pictures. And I remember meeting Megan's parents for the first time and we're snapping pictures of the girls and they're just acting so silly, making faces and just the proud moment that she had accomplished, you know, a 4.0 student working full time and just so glad for it to be over and to start the next chapter in her book. And unfortunately, she did not get to write another chapter. So Megan, however, has carried on with Sarah's legacy. And uh, those two, they would have been hand in hand. They were even going to do, they had a, for one of the scholarships, a, um, a like community service that they had to do and so they were going to do it at a nursing home over in Bellevue and poor Megan had to do it by herself and you know it, Sarah would have been right by her side as Megan was by Sarah's side so you know it does it makes my heart happy but then your mind tells you 15 hours she's going to be gone you know and it just it, we'll never forget it. We'll always remember it and we'll always have a hard time with it and we'll always be proud of her and her accomplishments, but sad that she didn't get to finish what she started.